Hello my friends, welcome to the new Magister Klaus video and uh, today I have uh, prepared something different from my usual videos that I prepare for you. It will be related a little bit to the invocations of the demons or invocation of the spirits, but I don't want to speak about particular spirit or demon today, but I would like to speak about the technique of the invocation or maybe even something more, because I have already mentioned in my previous videos uh, mostly how to make your magic work uh, or creation of the astral temple, these techniques for the invocations, for this internal connection with the spirit that we would like to uh, speak with or be with. But uh, we know, and also one of uh, you recently sent me a question and asked me, like, Klaus, when will you speak about the evocation? What is the difference between the invocation and evocation? Many of you, of course, know. At least we know from uh, what we are told uh, generally in demonolatry that invocation means uh, internal connection, meditation over the sigil, trying to connect with the spirit in our mind through some imaginative techniques, uh, maybe through partial possession or even possession. But it rarely, rarely uh, uh, also uh, is connected with something like uh, manifestation of the spirit on the physical plane. Uh, mostly newcomers are always asking, will I be able to see the spirit or the demon or even the angel directly before me? And uh, there are many answers like you might when you, when you will focus on it and you can see it in your mind. But is something like evocation, physical manifestation of the spirit or the demon even possible? Or is it just some kind of stuff of legends where we read about these books uh, from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe about uh, Faust conjuring or evoking Mephistopheles from the from from the incense and uh, trying to see him and trying to or to uh, trying to conjure the familiar the magical toad or raven or some kind of animal that is practically just uh, a form of the spirit that should help us. Is this really possible? And uh, I, uh, or some of us, think that uh, this is probably a myth, or it might be uh, an act that is practically changing the nature of, of, of our normal world, because even if we look at it, uh, from different perspectives there, it must be a very rare thing if it even exists, because it otherwise would be maybe shown on the, on the, uh, in the video, or, or we will have at least some kind of sightings, and you can find many videos about it, but it's always a little bit fuzzy or strangely done, or it might be a fake. So is it possible to evoke a demon? that he manifests in your area, in your room? Well, historically, what does the term in evocation even mean? It comes again, like from, from many about many words of magic, it comes from Latin and it means evocatio. Uh, it is calling forth. Uh, by calling forth, um, it was practically done in the, in the times of, of, uh, of Romans when uh, they were probably on a military, Romans were on many military campaigns, but uh, also in the later periods of the Roman Empire, their cities were under siege of, of barbaric, barbaric tribes or even other uh, competing kingdoms or their colonies uh, or uh, were also under, under the attack. And uh, all the time when they were feeling under threat that there was like too many enemies around them and the city might be under the siege, the uh, clergy of the, of the Roman gods uh, wanted to practice uh, so the, what they called uh, evocatio. So this was calling forth or uh, um, so-called tutelary deity, so the protective deity that should protect them 
uh, against uh, against the attack or should mitigate uh, some kind of damage when the city would be pillaged so there for example the sacred objects are not stolen away they were asking for direct spiritual in, uh, intervention and uh, this goes also these types of rituals these 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 invocations go even deeper into the into the greek society uh, we we find uh, some mentionings in so-called neoplatonism neoplatonists were always trying to connect with the with the uh, spirits or the entities of the higher uh, higher plane of existence through so-called theurgy so later on the medieval uh, times it was called like calling for the angels also in the western uh, esotericism uh, and uh, in many grimoires like uh, whether it is like greater key of solomon or lesser key of solomon uh, we find out that uh, these are not invocations when you read grimoireum verum or you read the lesser key of solomon you have uh, techniques where you practically call these uh, these spirit you are protected in a circle and you are using some kind of uh, uh, powerful chant or hymn or you are just trying to through the power of gods or angels force for example demonic energy uh, entities to uh, to appear uh, in modern demonolatry we we call this invasive technique because uh, we consider demons as uh, spiritual teachers helping on our path so we are not forcing them to appear so all this forcing this evocation might be considered as a little bit rude way how to connect but there are mentionings of uh, of workings or evocations that were not done because we have been forcing the uh, the spirits to appear but they uh, appear to us as a, a form of, uh, of of a gift or they wanted really like to 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 create this 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 also almost miracles experience to us and uh, there are uh, before i will speak about very specific book that goes very deep into it uh, we can also find out that uh, there is another word uh, which is not called evocation but conjuration so conjuration is also something that it's like a, a world that consists invocation and evocation as well by conjuration we want to to through our uh, uh, through our will or magical practice somehow uh, connect with the invoked or evoked spirits so they do some kind of uh, magical act or they they we would like to do a spell so when we want to have for example the uh, the spell uh, that should affect the reality around us we conjure the spirit so the act is done and uh, this uh, this practice is universal, practically all around the world. Whether it's it's not only in the Western mysticism, it is conjuration was also found in the pre-Islamic societies and in current Islam, for example, it's considered as a forbidden technique to working with the devil. But it's also uh, very famous in in the in the shamanistic uh, tribe societies around the world. Whether it's uh, uh, African jungles of the of the of the of the Brazil or 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 the or the places like Siberia and Mongolia. These these these, these shamans are still trying to conjure these specific spirits, or in Tibet, uh, uh, that uh, they will act and and do the the bidding of the of, of the conjurist. If you travel, for example, to the to the uh, countries of the Middle East or to the northern Africa like Morocco or, or, or in the Middle East like Oman, Saudi Arabia and uh, people really know you and they are not afraid to, to show you their practices because they are still forbidden uh, according to Islam. Uh, uh, the conjuration is still very famous practice. So the conjuration is done for example, the the the, conjure, the the magicians try to invoke jinn to to do uh, the bidding. So with the spell making, sometimes it's also act of that that change the the 
so-called physical reality. But uh, always, uh, for example, in the in the in the societies that, for example, practice voodoo, yeah, uh, during this possession, uh, there uh, they they try to also sometimes manifest the spirit, but the spirits are mostly invisible. Uh, they are invisible. They can be felt, and they can sometimes uh, possess the, the 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 person that is trying through the ritual of of, of trance uh, speak with them. But we can find also uh, mentionings of real manifestations of the spirits, whether it's like ghosts, spirits of the dead, but also the spirits like the demons. Uh, or uh, maybe sometimes even angels. Mm, there is a specific book uh, that uh, goes very deep into the rituals of the evocation. Uh, and the book uh, is called uh, The Sacred uh, mm, Magic of Abramelin the Mage. Some of you might have maybe seen the uh, famous British uh, horror movie dark song if you haven't seen the movie you can watch it because this movie was made uh, based on uh, the book of the uh, Abramelin the mage and uh, uh, this grimoire is quite famous it is uh, um, they are currently like uh, different theories who was the author some of the authors think that the book of Abramelin was actually, it was a Jewish rabbi, Yaakov Merlin, that lived in the 15th century, and he was a German Jewish Talmudist. So he, he knew a lot about uh, Kabbalah and the secret teachings of, of, the, of, of the Hebrew faith. Um, the book practically speaks about very complex form of ritual, uh, that if you will be able to, to go through all of the steps of the ritual, you will be able to connect with your so-called inner guardian diamond. Uh, by diamond, we understand your, uh, your, your, your spiritual guardian and your true self that will appear to you and will practically transform you. And will, and will, you will be able to maybe uh, ask for some kind of wish uh, that, uh, that will that, that will change the reality around you. You can become, like many say, invisible. So you, <laughs> or or you might get uh, you might get some kind of uh, very high spiritual gifts. But I am not speaking about very basic rituals that we do in the invocations. This is this uh, this ritual is itself transformation of the body and the soul. How it goes. So the whole book is uh, maybe it was written by the Rabbi Yaakov. But uh, the, uh, we, uh, it was originally written in uh, medieval German and currently we have uh, seven original manuscripts uh, that can be found. The, the first one is, uh, or the book is practically speaking about so-called Abramelin the mage that traveled to Egypt, get a lot of occult knowledge and later is uh, teaching his son Lamech that uh, these teachings and these teachings are about communion with the spirits uh, first with the demonic spirits with the demons later on with the angels and after the magician is balanced that he can we can connect with the angelic and demonic energies he is able to invoke this this uh, holy grail to know yourself absolutely to invoke your inner spiritual diamond your your inner inner spirit uh, to see it however to be uh, able to connect with your true self with your meaning uh, with your true meaning in the world you have to go through this ritual so uh, the first uh, book is uh, found or, or ascribed to the year 1458 so this is quite an old book uh, it exists in uh, later versions as well, 
there, uh, there are two versions from 1608, which, has, which are relatively late. Then uh, you can find there are two scripts in I think in the Museum of Dresden or the archives of Dresden. One is from the uh, early 18th century, it's from the uh, 1700, uh, and the second one is from the 1750s. So we know that this book was translated probably uh, by uh, later uh, authors. Uh, it became later on, even uh, uh, after the invention of the printing press, it was later on also printed again in German uh, by in Cologne uh, by Peter Hammer uh, in 1725. And this is the moment when the book starts to be a little bit more more known later on translated to French, uh, Italian versions uh, uh, un until today. Uh, this book was very uh, famous and later used also by the modern occultists of the, of the early 20th century. In 1897 uh, this book is uh, uh, translated again uh, with the commentaries and practically reworked but by another famous British occultist, uh, Mr. Samuel L. McGregor Matters, who was uh, very heavily influencing practically one of the, uh, the Golden Dawn. And uh, uh, also the book of uh, Sacred, uh, Sacred Magic of Abraman in the Mage is also later on mentioned by, by Aleister Crowley who indeed even wanted to go uh, and undergo this ritual. This ritual, according to the original book, consists of extreme, and now uh, extreme, this is a comparison to, the, uh, to what we currently do now with the invocations that many practitioners think that they just light a candle or they will do some kind of meditation and uh, the spirit will speak to them, no. Uh, the, the ritual of Abramel in the Mage should have taken uh, 18 months, 18 months in secluded space where you practically uh, uh, are fasting uh, for six days in a, in a week, eating only maybe a, a little bit of bread and water. Uh, you are avoiding any sexual uh, intercourse. You are not drinking alcohol you are doing meditation, prayers, uh, several times per day, and you are invoking the spirits after these periods uh, during each night for, for the amount of, for the time of 18 months. And uh, 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 during these 18 months, uh, the, the person goes very deep psychological transformation to connect with this holy diamond. Uh, Abraham in the Mage speaks or says that first you have uh, to be able to, to reach your inner diamond you have to peel all negativities or 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 toxicities your your first physical body and later on also cycle of uh, your 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 spirituality must be absolutely cleansed from from your inferiority complexes for example later used this word it was it was it's meant there like a peeling of the soul and they do it in the way that they, uh, during this uh, first month, uh, the practitioner should evoke uh, 12 uh, uh, kings of hell. So we speak about the names like Lucifer, Satan, Leviathan, Belial and others. Uh, the, all of these uh, kings and dukes of, uh, of, of hell uh, were able to, to peel some kind of your uh, negative part of the soul from you, so you are cleansed enough, because first you have to descend, to ascend, in the, uh, so in the next month you communicate with the angels and the archangels, you communicate with high celestial beings. And after a year and a half, you, you go through the, through the transformation and you communicate with your, with your inner diamond, with your spiritual guardian. So this spiritual guardian is practically your absolute uh, self-realization. And after these, uh, these 18 months, 
you are absolutely transformed and you become the real adept. And uh, uh, on the 18th month, of course, these are the evocations. You, uh, you can imagine that person that goes through this very ridiculous way of uh, seclusion, living in a secluded place, uh, praying, fasting, doing rituals each day without connection with other people, practically living only from the earth. Uh, maybe they have some kind of food or uh, some uh, this. It was very hard. And these people undergo through, through visions, through hallucinations, through, through deep spiritual experiences. And this is the magic. It's, uh, uh, it is absolute opposite of this immediate gratification. But, but unfortunately, so many people in so many, and also in the left hand path, uh, spiritual or uh, movements are expecting that they will get it immediately. So many people try to do this ritual, even, even uh, McGregor Matters later on in the Golden Dawn, when he was making the translation to English, he shortened in the book the time from the 18 months to only six months. So if you read the newer version, which can be uh, found out on uh, uh, still bought on Amazon, uh, you will read six months. And uh, Alistair Crowley uh, also went for this ritual, but uh, at that time uh, there were some things uh, also in in his in his business. I think he was uh, already like uh, uh, he needed more money, and there were some pressing issues, and he. Uh, interrupted the ritual after in, uh, after I think a month and a half, so he was not able to to finish it later on. He never tried again. He he went later on to Egypt and so on. And uh, but the ritual of Abramelin the mage was never never done by him. This book speaks also a lot about the magical theory. So it's not only meditation practice, it speaks a lot about so-called gematria, working with the magic squares, because while working with the, with the, with the angelic entities, uh, they are many times represented as a, uh, with the very strange names, as a strings of uh, alphabetic letters. So you have to know also a little bit about, uh, about these, uh, these, uh, these magical squares and uh, the, the secret teachings of the numbers, this uh, Pythagorean mystical geometry. Uh, the book is not only uh, one source that is used for this. For example, John Dee, as an uh, as an famous alchemist later, was also using a lot of Enochian techniques for the workings with the angels. Uh, I have read the book. Uh, it is uh, really heavily written in this medieval form and uh, hard to understand. It's practically uh, not realistic to do this in, in this modern time. You will be practically, you should have maybe a lot of money and abilities or something to live one, a year and a half in in absolutely secluded place. But they are practitioners that are trying at least to go into this and to do the shortened versions of the of the ritual of Abramel in the mage to be able to do the magical evocation, but still it takes at least three months or so. So friends, if you are looking for very like immediate, uh, uh, or immediate results, so many of uh, young occultists or new occultists are, for example, asking me, I invoked, the, invoked uh, the spirit maybe once and he did not appear, or I invoked him twice and he did not appear. It is really nothing. Yeah, you, you, you should be prepared before you go through, uh, before Abraham Elin tried this ritual for a year and a half, he was maybe, he was a rabbi maybe for 20 years. It was a person that was deep, if it existed, or it, or, or uh, any type of uh, this high-level occultist like Mr. Crowley that tried this Abramelin ritual, but he was doing magic for, for 20 years before that. It is, it is the holy grail. So magic is it's a road for your life, and maybe it will take even more than one life. Uh, uh, the results come, but uh, be prepared to 
for a thorny and uh, dark road and uh, start with the invocation of the spirit starts with the meditation read the book and maybe later on you will decide for the ritual of the abraham in the mage i hope that one day i will be able to try it and but i don't know if i will be successful or if i will be able to do it for year and a half because who would make the videos <laughs> okay it was a, just a joke so friends i hope you like it leave the comments and we can speak later have a great day